Hi, welcome to the class called Android App Development in Java. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor here at Grand Canyon University. The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of what you're going to learn in the next semester. So here are three pictures of things that we will be working on during this semester. First of all, we will focus on using layouts, and so designing an, a user interface in Android Studio. We'll also be working with some graphics, things like this with the Love Match, We'll be working with a Google Maps application in different ways. So let's talk about whether this course is for you or not. So first of all, this is obviously a course for people who want to work on Android. We'll be working with Android Studio, which is either a Macintosh or a Windows computer program. But it is not for iOS, for the Apple phone. It is just for Android. And so Android is universal. You can, you can develop apps on a Windows computer or a Mac. If you want to make an iOS application, then you must have a Macintosh. And so that is why I'm focusing on Android, because it's more easily taught to a wide group of people. So you need to know some programming skills. We'll be working with some classes or properties and methods. And so basic object-oriented programming is required if you're going to accomplish any of these applications. You have to be a kind of person that likes to make games, because most of the applications we'll create here are about games. And so they work with every kind of thing or detail or component that most programs work with, but games are ways of learning things in an interesting way. And then finally, be willing to expend some mental energy. This is not easy, and if anyone promises you that it's easy to create applications in programming, then they don't know what computer science and computer programming looks like, because... They're problems that have to be solved, and so be sure that you're ready to accomplish some of these things. Here's the outline of the course. So we're going to split it into seven different units. Each unit will take about two weeks in the on-ground format. So in the first part, we'll start simple. So you don't have to have any previous Android development experience to be able to succeed. We'll start with the most basic things, like how to click a button, how to set things out on a layout. In chapter two of this unit, we'll talk about making event listeners, which are the things that cause your program to trigger events. And so, like clicking a button, or when a timer goes off, or when somebody closes or opens a window, those are all events. We'll talk about design patterns. So to make your program look good and design it using what's called a, a model view controller type of design, rather than just throwing all your code into one long list. We'll talk about implicit intents and managing lists. So that means how can you take a service from Android phone, such as making a phone call or showing a map, and turning that into a feature in your program. Lists are just what they say. Lists are lists of things. So a list of friends, a list of scores, a list of anything that needs to be scrolled through is somewhat challenging and so it requires a special application and tutorial on how to learn how to manage lists. We'll talk about how to manage your data. Storing data either in a file or in a database is a great way to keep your persistence for your high scores or your list of friends or whatever your program is supposed to save is what we're going to do locally. Then in number six we'll talk about GPS and we'll talk about maps. So location services is really the technical term for it. GPS is part of location services. And then finally, we'll talk about online data storage. So making your application so that it has a shareable component. So you can post your high scores. You can share a game. You can do social media type things with your applications when you work with online data storage. So now let's look in detail about some of the programs that we're going to build for each unit. In topic one, we're going to do four things. We're going to create a lesson that will teach you the basics of Java in 30 minutes. And so it's just in case you don't know Java. So you, knew, you do need to know how to do most programming techniques already. We'll create a jokes app, which will show jokes and their answers. We'll do a Roman numeral conversion program so that it will use a separate class that will do some math in the background and show you the conversion between digital and Roman numerals. And then we'll have a challenge called a shape calculator. And so you'll build a little math formula that will allow you to create the perimeter and the area of various shapes. So the point of all these is that you will learn how to work with basic buttons and layouts in a simple application. In unit two, we'll focus in on what's called event listeners. So there's a bunch of programs that you can see here on the screen. 
we'll talk about the fast clicker. It's just a simple game to see how many times you can click a button in 30 seconds. We'll do a similar thing with fast typing. We'll give you a paragraph to type and then time you and see how fast you can type out all the typing accurately. We'll do dice rolling, which is just a simulation of a, of a dice in a random event. Rock, si rock, scissors, paper is the famous game where you play your, your fist or your scissors or your paper and uh, the computer will play against you. So it's also focusing on random events. Then we'll do Spin the Bottle and Love Meter, which are two programs that focus on an animation. So the bottle will spin around on a table, and you can decide who gets to pay the bill based on where the bottle points when it stops. The Love Meter is a gauge that is also animated, and it will show how compatible you are with another person. And then finally, a challenge that will be given to you not as a tutorial exercise, but as a, as a programming challenge, is to create a gambling game using roulette. Now you can see that I have some of these boxes around here. These purple boxes show that one of these two items will be a selection that you make uh, because they both, in both items in the box, focus on similar uh, goals and education outcomes. And so we'll only do half of the events that are listed on this page. And topic three, we'll talk about design patterns. Making your application scalable, so that way if you are not the only programmer working on the project, it'll be easier to split the work. So we'll use a math quiz application that will show us how to take a Java class that works in the background that would work equally well as a console app or as a graphical user interface app, but that logic in the background will be used as the basis for the game. We'll talk about implicit intents. That's simply a way to open another screen, open another activity in Android. So that way your program can be more complex. The life cycle of an app is primarily focused in on when it starts and when it stops, when it pauses. Those kind of things are a life cycle's event. And it just turns out that when you rotate your phone sideways, the life cycle events are extremely important because your program basically restarts when you turn a phone 90 degrees. And then I'm going to give you a math quiz challenge, so I'm going to take some of the components of uh, items two and three on this list and ask you to put them into the math quiz. And so topic three will be a little bit more complex of a design. And in topic four, now we're going to be talking about implicit intents. So implicit intents are different than explicit in the way that you can have a request sent to the Android operating system to perform an action. For example, Suppose I ask the uh, phone to take a photo for me. I don't have to redesign the entire photo app. I can just call the operating system with an implicit intent to say, get me a picture. And the photo app should automatically be launched. The user selects a photo, and then it comes back to my program. And so I can use a lot of things that are already built into Android, so I don't have to redesign all from scratch. So common implicit intents include things like making a phone call. So if I want to make a phone call, I just simply supply a phone number and tell the operating system to complete the call, and it will do the rest for me. So those are some of the things that we'll see in Unit 4. In Unit 5, we'll talk about storing data in persistence. There are two ways that we're going to look at it. We're going to save files to a text file. And so we use a library called Jackson, which will make this much more simple. And then we'll talk about SQL databases. And so Android has a built-in local database called SQLite. And so we'll learn how to use the SQLite uh, program using NoteTaker as an application. In number six, we'll talk about location services. And so the program is called Fused Location Client. Fused means combined. So your location can be GPS, it can be related to the towers that your phone is connected to, or location can be computed using Wi-Fi. And so fused means bring them all together and we'll call it location services. Then we'll also work with Google Maps and we'll be able to plot points on the map, where we visited, where we've walked, where, we went, where we'd like to go. And then we'll create a game called the Geocache game where you provide a course for the player to complete. And so they walk around the co college campus or your neighborhood or wherever you want to put the markers. And then you can time the user as he walks through the course. Number seven, we'll talk about storing your data online. And so we'll work with a, with a, a library called Volley. Volley is a API um, client. 
And so we'll get free data from other services and then incorporate that into a quiz application. Also, we'll work with Firestore, which is Google's uh, online real-time database that is very commonly used in Android apps. And then we'll extend our geocache program to put an online component with it. And so those are the seven different course parts that we're going to complete this semester. So welcome aboard, and let's get started in the next video.